Hello everybody. I would like to welcome you all to this presentation is which is a part of uh, the initiative taken by VTU eShikshana program for VTU course on design of steel structural elements CV 1861. I am sure that at the end of this particular presentation, okay, this particular topic would be quite simple to you all. I am Dr. S. Raviraj, Professor of Civil Engineering at Sri Jai Jamrajendra College of Engineering okay, under JSS Science and Technology University, Mysuru. I am happy to state that I am sharing this particular uh, course with three more experts, namely Professor M. C. Nataraja, Professor Anil Kumar and Professor Geeta Kumari, all of MSRIT Bangalore. I will be basically covering module 4 of this particular course 18 CV 61, which comprises of design of tension members and design of slab base. To begin with, I would be spending the time on design of tension members and later I will be talking to you about design of slab base. So, let me start the presentation on design of tension members. Okay. So, if we just try to look at the tension members. Okay. So, this tension member okay, can be, uh, uh, I am just trying to talk about the learning outcomes okay, into different categories like the introduction part connected with axially tension members, then factors affecting the strength of member, modes of tension failure, design strength of tension member, a shear lag, design of lug angles and numerical examples okay, connected with uh, simple connections okay, that we are trying to have in this particular exercise. Now, the first thing that we, we are trying to talk about here is, okay, now tension members, whatever we are, we are trying to talk about okay, are all linear members. I hope you know the meaning of the word linear. Okay, it is structurally straight, prismatic is what we are trying to talk about, where the cross sectional area remains same okay, over the entire span. Okay. Now, these members are subjected to an axial pull okay, is what we are trying to say. Okay, that means, whatever force we are trying to apply is an axial force which passes through the CG and this is okay, an axial pull which tries to extend okay, or deform okay, the bar. Okay. Now, when this particular uh, member is subject to an axial force, it just undergoes extension without the bending. Okay. You do not have bending here, it is just only the extensions okay. and this type of members are most efficient okay, when you just try to talk about any other member basically because okay, the entire cross sectional area of the member will resist okay, this axial force. That means, we normally expect uniform stresses okay, to develop over the entire cross section unlike that seen in case of members subjected to bending. I hope you are aware of bending stress. Okay, where we have the maximum stress at the top fiber, okay, compressive stress, minimum, uh, I mean, uh, maximum tensile stress at the bottom fiber, and zero stress at the neutral axis, where the stress distribution, okay, is not uniform, okay, or the entire cross-sectional area, okay, is what you need to understand, correct? Okay, and please understand that in this particular case, as we said, okay, entire cross-section, okay, resists this particular tensile force, okay, that is a very good thing that we have here. Now, another important thing that we are trying to talk about is unlike compression members, okay, these members do not buckle. Okay. Please understand if you just try to recollect the discussion that we have on compression member, if you just try to take uh, a slender stick and then try to apply a force on that compressive force, it is going to buckle. Okay. Whereas, we are not trying to have any such kind of okay, uh, deformation happening here. The only kind of deformation you can expect 
okay, in a tension member is extension, correct. So that being the case, please understand, okay, we are not really uh, uh, worried about the classification, okay, of sections, whether it is plastic, compact, okay, semi-compact or slender, okay. So we do not really look into that because, right, the structure is not going to buckle, okay, or bend and hence, okay, this kind of classification, okay, is not relevant in this particular design that is design of tension members, okay. And hence, the most important point that you need to talk about here is, okay, the design stress Fy, right, okay, is not reduced, okay, in this particular case, right. So, this is a very good uh, uh, thing that we are trying to have in this particular discussion, okay. Now, these are some pictures, okay, where we are just trying to show you okay, some uh, structures where we can have tension members. So, you can clearly see that we have some group of members, okay, present here, okay, and you can understand that, right, some members like especially the bottom card that we have here, okay, would be in tension, correct, and some intermediate, okay, web members, okay, will also subject it to tensile forces, okay, as a result of which the members, uh, these uh, uh, members experience, okay, the, the uh, tensile stress. The previous figure, okay, was for a roof of a building, whereas here, this is again a truss, okay, in a bridge. Please understand, the size of this particular bridge, okay, would be definitely huge when compared to the size of the truss that we have in case of buildings, right, okay. So, again, the same kind of uh, mechanism, okay, exists even this particular bridge where you can expect that the bottom cards are subjected to tensile stress, okay, and again some intermediate cards in the web will also be subjected to tensile forces, right. However, the top cards would be in compression. So, we are just concentrating on, okay, tensile uh, members, okay, and again these are some, uh, uh, I mean, uh, towers, okay, where we are trying to use in, uh, uh, I mean, that is your uh, transmission lines and you can clearly see again, this is again made up of many members that we are trying to have here and you can expect that, okay, some members are in tension, okay. You can expect that we also have tension tensile members in these kind of uh, structures, okay. This is again another tower used for a different purpose, that is we have, uh, call, we call this as the communication towers where you are trying to have lot of satellites mounted on these particular structures or sorry, uh, communication uh, devices, right. So, this is again one more, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 structure that we can think of where we have a tension, okay, in, in existing, okay, in this kind of a structure. So, the predominant uh, kind of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, a member in the component would be the main cable, okay, or would be the anchor cable. Apart from that, you can notice that we also have, okay, a, a huge stiff stiffening girder bridge, okay, present, okay, on either side of the deck of this particular road and you can expect that these truss members, okay, so some of them would be in tension. So, you can expect that you are trying to encounter okay, tensile members, okay, of members subject to tensile forces, right, in many kind of structures that we are trying to talk about. So, this is one more important thing that you need to understand, correct. So, whenever we have some towers like this, okay, so the towers, okay, could be subjected to, okay, loads in such a way that and sometimes it may, I mean, and, uh, I mean, it may act like especially the wind load could be acting in this direction, after some time the wind load could be acting in the reverse direction, correct. So, whenever we have such kind of reversal of stresses, right, okay, or loads, correct. So, we can expect that, okay, reversal of stresses could exist in the members and in such cases, okay, you can clearly see that we have, okay, bracings, okay, so that is X bracings either on the side of the building, okay, or in, on, or that is in the front or the side of the building, you can have such kind of things, correct. So, here also you can clearly see, okay, cross braces. So, whenever uh, we have uh, uh, structures which are subjected to uh, reversal of loads, okay, so sometime the member will be in tension, sometime the member will be in compression. So, in such cases, okay, this kind of configuration, okay, would be seen over there, okay. Now, coming to this particular course, now please understand that uh, normally you can expect uh, two different types of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean uh, 
problem that we can uh, talk about in this particular case. The first type of problem that you can just try to talk about in this particular case is uh, correct. So, we just try to talk about a given member okay, where we just try to say okay, uh, all, all uh, dimensions of the member will be given, okay, the end conditions will be specified and we are trying to find okay, the tensile strength of that particular member. You can just try to treat this as one category problem in the sense that everything is specified. Okay. So, in the sense that we have uh, an angle section okay, of some size okay, and connected to a gusset plate with some kind of an end connection, right? it could be bolted or it could be welded. So, all those details will be given. So, the task here is to find the tensile strength of such kind of a member. So, the second type of problem that you can just try to talk about is, okay, so we just try to specify the axial force, we just try to specify the axial force okay, that the tensile member should carry and then the task is okay, to arrive at the appropriate dimensions okay, required okay, by the tensile member to resist that load and also the appropriate connection required. Okay, to resist this particular tensile force. So, we are trying to categorize, you can categorize the problem to two types. That means, okay, so member is given, connection is given, you calculate the tensile strength or okay, the specified axial force is given, okay, then you just try to uh, work out the suitable uh, cross sectional, uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, cross section that we have to provide and the kind of end connections also we should have for that particular problem. So, these are two different uh, uh, things that you can just try to think of okay, when we just try to talk about doing numerical examples. Okay. Now, this is uh, another imp um, important thing that you need just to understand here. That is what are the factors okay, which influence the tensile strength okay, for, for any particular struck or any member. The first one is the type of connection. So, please understand that okay, so the way in which we try to do the problem correct would be different in the sense that okay so if you are ju just doing a bolted connection okay right or if it is a welded connection okay so the kind of uh, uh, calculations we are trying to do slightly will be different is it all right so you need to understand again okay so whether it is bolted or welded so again it depends so we need to just try to talk about okay which type of connection we are just trying to talk about the length of the connection is it all right so the length of the connection will also influence the tensile strength Okay, of the structure. So, generally we should have adequate length okay, all right, of the connection. All right. So, to, to see that, okay, so the member can definitely take up its uh, full load carrying capacity. Okay. Size and spacing of the fasteners, okay, especially the uh, bolts that we are trying to talk about. So, again it is good to understand by experience. Okay. So, what size of bolts okay, would be good okay, for a given kind of a uh, tensile structure, right, for a given section. Okay, and uh, what should be the spacing and please understand fortunately we have uh, IS 800 okay, 2007 okay, which will help us to okay, uh, uh, identify okay, so the, 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 the kind of uh, uh, bolts okay, that we are trying to have here the spacings all those things. Okay. And again the net cross sectional area also governs okay, the, the load carrying capacity of the tensile member okay, here. Right. So, this is generally true in case of bolted connections, but not in case of welded connections because when you just talk about net, okay, so uh, I mean uh, we, uh, it, it, it is generally discussed when we have bolts where we just try to uh, uh, drill holes okay, in the angles or it could be channels whatever tensile member we are trying to talk about and that reduces okay, the cross sectional area and then we are trying to just work it out the, the net area available okay, to carry the tensile force etcetera. Okay. So, this particular thing again influences the tensile strength and generally seen in case of bolted connections. Then the type of fabrication, again we will just talk about type of fab fabrication more or less it would be with respect to bolted connection. So, generally again when we just talk about bolted connection, we would be trying to uh, drill holes okay, or make holes. Correct. So, when you are just trying to make holes, there would be two process, either it, it could be through punching or it could be drilling. Obviously, drilling is much better than punching okay, because punching will try to reduce okay, the, the, the uh, some amount of uh, uh, load carrying capacity okay, of that particular member. Right. So, again type of fabrication also tries to influence, will also influence the tensile strength of the member. Correct. And finally, the last one connection eccentricity. 
right? So generally, okay, this is a very important thing that you need to be aware of, correct? So generally, if you just try and talk about just plates, okay, so generally you don't expect this kind of connection eccentricity to take place. But most of the time, okay, we would be just trying to talk about angles, correct? And whenever we just try to fix an angle, okay, right onto the uh, uh, gazette plate and you will be understanding that, okay, only one uh, uh, side of the angle gets connected, correct, to the gazette plate, okay, in which case, okay, you can expect some kind of eccentricity happening in the connection, is it all right, at the connection point. And we are just trying to explain this particular phenomena in terms of shear lag and how to overcome that, all those things, right. So important thing is, okay, connect, connection eccentricity also plays an important role, okay, in influencing the tensile strength of the member, correct. So these are very important things that you should be aware of. Now let us try to just go through, to go through some of the commonly used, okay, uh, sections for tensile members, okay. So let us try to just go through one by one. So this is a typical angle, right, okay. If you just try to look at this, this, uh, this is a picture showing some four angles, okay, kept over there, okay. And you can notice that, okay, we have two legs here, correct, okay. And uh, uh, it is not necessary that the two legs, okay, be of equal size, okay. So it could be either equal or it would be unequal. Correct. So, we have uh, this as length of one leg. So, if I call this as A, correct, this could be B, correct, is it all right? And that could be T, correct. So, it is not necessary that A and B are same. It could be also same, right. So, we have equal leg angles and unequal leg angles, correct. So, this is the first kind of uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, uh, section that we use in this particular discussion, correct. The second one, I think, uh, the second one, okay, that we have is an I section, is it all right in this case? So, uh, I section can also be used, but please understand they are quite heavy and whenever uh, we are supposed to uh, take huge tensile forces, so, so we can expect uh, to use even I sections, correct? So, this is a typical I section that you can clearly see, okay, that is a cross section. So, please understand this is the top flange, okay, so top flange, correct? the bottom flange, correct, top flange, bottom flange and the web, correct and the web. So we have three parts over there, correct, that is the web, okay. So top flange, bottom flange and web. Okay. So, you can clearly uh, uh, see that all those uh, things in the discussion. The next one is the T section and in this case please understand you do not have the bottom flange. You have only the top flange and the web. You do not have the bottom flange here in this particular case and that is a picture okay, showing the section, okay, a picture of the T section over there. Right? Then this is the channel section that we have here. Right? So, we just try to look at this channel section. Correct. So, you have a top flange, a bottom flange and a web, but unlike an I section where the web is at the mid of the flange, here it is to one side, correct. And these are some pictures, okay, showing uh, uh, the channel sections, okay, that are available in the market, okay. And then these are very popular sections, okay, called as tubular sections, correct. So, we have uh, hollow tubes basically, okay, hollow rectangular or square sections. Okay. So, please understand if the uh, width and depth okay, are same, okay. so we normally call them as square sections, square tubular sections okay, or hollow tubular sections okay. and the thickness will be generally same all round. So, this is a picture showing uh, different uh, uh, cross sections or different uh, sizes okay, of uh, tube sections okay, that, you, that you have in the market. So, apart from that, the last one that we have is one more tubular section which is again popular, okay, it is hollow circular tubular section, is it all right? So, we can have different diameters, we can have different diameters and thickness that we have here. So, these are some uh, popular kind of uh, uh, sections which are used as tension members in regular structures like angle sections, you got the I section, you got the T section, okay, you got the channel section right and then uh, the uh, tubular sections, is it all right? So, generally I sections 
okay, uh, are used or child sections are used when the tensile forces are quite large, right? Okay. Now let's try to understand. Okay. So when are we trying to go for single sections? Is it all right? So we have the tension members can be made of only one section or it could be a built up section, okay, where we are trying to have uh, uh, the tension member made of two or uh, I mean uh, two sections, okay, right, arranged in some specific way. Okay. Now, generally, okay, when we have uh, uh, less force acting on the structure, so that means you do not have uh, a significantly large force acting okay, in the member, so just in case of for your roof truss. Okay, right? So, definitely we can go in for uh, single sections over here, okay? single sections we can just try to go in for and these are generally economical because obviously you are trying to consume okay less amount of material over here okay single sections right and you can just try to choose the appropriate kind of uh, uh, cross sectional area okay of that angle section maybe okay and then try to talk about uh, uh, putting over here to resist that uh, minimum force that we have here okay now single angle members as i told you okay are used in uh, the web members Okay, also in the bottom card okay, of trusses and towers. Correct? Now, this picture shows a, a truss and that is uh, a tower. So, what do you mean by web? So, please understand that is a web. So, this is a web, that is a web, okay, these are web members, these are web members. So, generally okay, these web members okay, carry lesser force when compared to the bottom card, when compared to the bottom card. Correct? So, bottom card is also subjected to Okay, tensile force, but please understand okay, the tensile force carried by some of these members, it is not that all the web members will be under tension, some of them will be in tension, some of them will be in compression. Okay. Please understand the web members, okay, if they are in tension, the force carried by them is relatively less when compared to the bottom card okay. and these web members definitely okay, we can just try to go for single sections over here. Okay. Similarly, in case of your uh, towers. Right? So, the web members that we are trying to have, you can clearly see these thin lines. Okay? So, you can definitely uh, uh, understand that these are single angle sections okay, that are used okay, in this particular case okay, uh, uh, to resist those particular force. So, what you need to understand is okay, single section members are generally used when the force is less, they are economical. Generally, you can just try to say that the web members okay, in case of your truss or in case of your uh, uh, I mean towers okay, are made up of single angle, especially uh, angle, single member angle sections. Now, coming to the next one, okay, so we have uh, 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 a section made up of two members okay, which we call as uh, okay, built up sections, which we call as built up sections. So, when you just talk about built up sections, okay, you can understand that we have uh, two members or it could be even more than that. Okay, and generally we try to understand that uh, okay, they are more rigid, okay? they are more rigid when compared to individual members. And when do we require this? Obviously, we understand that when the force is very large, correct? so single sections okay, are not sufficient, so we have to go for okay, so two or more members built up in some kind of an arrangement to resist that particular force. So, you can clearly see them in card members of root, roof truss. What do you mean by cord? Cord is nothing but either the extreme top or extreme bottom, correct? So, in case of cord members, okay, the top cord or bottom cord, but top cord is in compression, the bottom cord is in tension, correct? So, in case of cord members of root process, you can just try to understand that you can have members like this. You can clearly see this is one section showing okay, two angles okay, placed okay, in this particular fashion. Now, please understand what is the space? between them this space okay so this space okay is the one okay where we are trying to place the gusset okay at the end okay gusset at the end so that space between the member okay right uh, will be matching the thickness of the gusset blade it could be 8 mm it could be 10 mm so obviously you cannot keep the two members right okay uh, uh, perfectly in contact so there would be some space Okay, that we have here okay, in this particular case. Correct? So, we have some space uh, over here and this space will match the thickness of the gusset plate is what you need to understand over here. Right? Okay? So, uh, when subjected to reversal stress, okay, again this kind of uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, built up sections are used. 
okay and as i told you the gap is normally between 6 to 10 which will be matching the size of the gusset plate okay and should be interconnected at regular intervals by spacer plates so as you know that the gusset plates are present only at the ends okay where we are trying to have the connection so assume that okay the length of the member between the gusset plates correct could be something like about uh, some 5 meters correct so we don't just try to leave uh, that that gap okay right uh, for the length of uh, 5 meters okay so maybe for for regular intervals say at every 1 meter you can insert a plate okay between the uh, uh, between the two uh, angles and then you can connect them properly is it all right so that would be a good practice okay that we are trying to have here so that will be interconnected at regular intervals by spacer plates okay and uh, uh, please understand that at the end okay these plates okay these these uh, members so you can clearly see will be connected correct by the to the gusset plate so even whether it is uh, single members or even if it is rigid members i mean double members or whatever it is built up members okay at the ends okay there would be kind some kind of an arrangement okay you can clearly see there are two angles here okay one on this side one on the other side okay i think this particular picture okay can give you some clarity over here okay there's a space between the two and then this is these are the spacer plates okay connected regular intervals and then finally okay it is connected okay at the end to the gusset plate correct so these are this is different kind of arrangement you can just try to think of over here now again when we just try to talk about uh, okay uh, bridge trusses i did tell you uh, showed you a picture of bridge truss okay huge depth okay it could be even something like uh, uh, the the height of that or the depth of that bridge truss could be something like about 10 feet okay it could be of that size okay so generally they could be made of a channel section we already seen this this particular channel section that is a channel section that we have here so that is i section that we have here and we have tubular sections you can clearly see there are three tubular sections that we have here so this is uh, uh, the the circular section tubular section the square tubular section and the rectangular tubular section and this is a built up section with uh, uh, two angles placed back to back you can clearly see here so that is one angle okay that we have here so that is the other angle that we have here so two angles placed uh, at some distance okay back to back okay some spacing over here it could be even the reverse way toe to toe okay and this is again one more built up section you can just try to understand we have an i section on top of the i section okay we have kept a channel section something like that so that is to reinforce okay the top flange correct so what you need to understand is generally in case of bridge trusses okay you can think of some heavy sections okay just to resist uh, the larger forces that we encounter in such kind of structures okay and again uh, these are some pictures showing you how the uh, tubular sections okay can be uh, I mean used okay in case of bridge trusses so look at this okay the left picture okay shows you a bridge truss made up of tubular circular sections tubular circular sections so these sections are used not only for the uh, bottom card okay it is used in the top card as you can clearly see and even in the web okay everything is made of circular tubular sections okay and depending upon the force some members are uh, uh, i mean require uh, bigger diameter tubes and some members require smaller diameter tubes so you can clearly see that notice that here the size of the tubes okay are not uniform or same okay at all places okay they will be different so again this is uh, an, a, again one more uh, picture showing you how the uh, i mean uh, uh, tubular uh, uh, i mean sections okay this is the this is a square tubular section okay used okay in case of a bridge truss so you can i hope this will just try to give you some kind of uh, imagination okay how exactly things are being done okay at the site using the standard sections okay that we just uh, uh, showed you all right okay just a, a few uh, uh, time ago okay few slides uh, before now this is uh, one important expression okay that i think you should never miss okay or forget right in case of your tensile uh, design of tension members right so i think this expression has been derived in your uh, very first class of your strength of materials right so we just try to check so we always define okay the young's modulus okay right as the ratio of okay stress by strain okay or we say the young's modulus right is a constant 
right okay and it's nothing but the slope of the initial portion of the stress strain diagram okay where the uh, mat material is linear and elastic that means up to the proportionality limit correct so the ratio of stress by strain will remain a constant okay within the proportionality limit at constant temperature and this is defined as okay the young's model is okay or the slope of the initial stress strain diagram and you can understand that this stress is calculated as load the axial force by area okay and the strain is delta l by l change in length by initial length okay and if you just try to rearrange this you got this expression delta l equal to pl by a e right so it's a very simple expression i hope you know very well about this particular expression okay so normally we just can use this particular expression to calculate the amount of extension okay extension okay that the prismatic bar okay will undergo right so it can be easily calculated without any difficulty where p okay is the axial force that the uh, 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 I mean, uh, uh, tensile member is being carried and please understand it's very very important to note that this uh, p that we are trying to substitute is unfactored it is unfactored whenever we do the design correct we will always be doing the design for factored load but whenever we try to calculate the deformation in the structure it is actual deformation okay we are going to calculate we are, we are trying to calculate over there and you should always do the calculation for the unfactored load correct that is in the serviceable conditions correct so this p is the unfactored load or the actual working load acting acting on the structure l is the length of the member okay a g a sub x c is the cross cross sectional area of the member and e is the uh, material property that is young's modulus which normally would be somewhere between 200 to 210 gigapascals correct so this is a simple expression i think you are all very familiar and comfortable using which you can easily calculate the extensions okay that the uh, tensile member okay can undergo correct now coming to this important uh, 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 diagram that we are trying to talk about i hope you are all very familiar with this particular diagram correct so this is nothing but okay uh, the, 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 this is this is this is on mild steel okay this is high strength steel you got both correct it's not not only mild steel okay it is a typical stress strain diagram okay of uh, mild steel and high strength steel okay both are over there so if you just try to look at the kind of uh, uh, behavior that we are trying to have here so if you just try to look at this stress strain diagram of uh, to begin with mild steel okay so initially we have the straight linear part correct okay and once okay you just try to uh, exceed once the deformation okay exceeds a particular value you can clearly see that okay roughly at the same stress okay the deformation starts to increase considerably i hope you all have done the tension test you have got this kind of a stress strain diagram though okay in this particular region okay you will you may be noticing okay a small uh, um, and, uh, uh, hump over there which we call the upper rail point lower rail point etc correct but however when we are just trying to talk about uh, okay doing uh, uh, I mean, uh, an ideal kind of a thing over here we always ignore that and then we try to say you have a predominantly plastic region over here and then followed by a strain hardening portion up to point up to point c and then you can clearly see that this, uh, the the actual that is your uh, um, in, uh, uh, um, nominal stress will start to reduce and finally okay the 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 uh, uh, the, the specimen okay will break at point which we call as the ultimate stress correct now please understand that when we just talk about this particular material the most important thing that you need to understand here is the ductility of the material what is ductility ductility is nothing but the ability of the material to undergo large deformations correct before failure right and that's a very important uh, advantage that you always talk about in steel structures correct so you can clearly see that okay huge amount of uh, deformations or strains okay can be uh, uh, seen okay in these kind of materials okay before failure now again high strength steel so look at the difference between high strength steel and uh, mild steel so definitely high strength steel is not as ductile as uh, mild steel correct generally it's not that ductile okay and again it does not exhibit well defined yield point over here so whenever a structure does not define well defined yield point okay we have a technique 
uh, called as okay 0.2 percent proof stress okay which can give you the value of uh, the yield stress okay this is nothing but the yield stress I make clear there is the yield stress or proof stress okay yield or proof stress okay so this value can be easily obtained okay which by, by what is called as 0.2 percent proof stress so all you're supposed to do is uh, take a point here which is equal to point uh, uh, zero 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 two correct that is point uh, two zero two and then draw a line here okay which is parallel to the initial straight line and whatever point it intersects okay we'll just try to give you the 0.2 percent proof stress but definitely that is not required in case of a in case of mild steel correct so you can clearly note that okay so right from here to here it exhibits well defined yield point and this point okay will just try to give me the value of yield stress okay directly over here okay now please understand that uh, generally we will be trying to talk about okay uh, uh, most of the materials okay would be somewhere connected with mild steel or slightly a uh, good uh, better uh, uh, yield strengths than mild steel okay the grades we are just trying to discuss okay uh, when we just try to take up numerical examples so important thing that we are trying to talk about is we are just trying to talk about material which exhibits well defined yield point and uh, uh, whenever we just try to talk about actual structural analysis i think in the plastic theory you would be trying to understand that uh, we just try to uh, take only this part of the diagram okay which we call as the ideal elastic plastic uh, uh, stress strain diagram and then we try to do the analysis okay we generally don't push the material okay beyond this particular limit okay so this is a very important thing that you should know okay when we are trying to do steel structures okay now let's try to come to a very important discussion that we are trying to talk about here so design of tension members correct so this okay whatever we have talked about uh, till now okay is very general information okay that is applicable okay uh, to uh, steel structures okay in general now we are starting with okay a small discussion on tension members okay now the very important thing that we are trying to talk about is this important equation correct that we are trying to talk about so what is t okay t is nothing but the factored load okay that the uh, member okay is designed for okay and td is the actual design strength of the member correct so please understand these two things very very clearly for example i want to uh, i am just trying to talk about uh, i mean uh, designing okay a, a member okay which is subjected to some tensile force so let me assume that or let me say that the tensile force the actual tensile force okay it's carrying is something like about uh, uh, 50 kilonewtons correct but the first thing that you need to do understand in limit state method is we always try to factor the loads that means you increase the load okay by some factor correct so we are just trying to talk about psf partial safety factor for load correct so we assume that we are trying to increase by 50 percent so we don't design it for 50 correct we design it for 75 kn correct so 50 is the working load and 75 is the factored load correct and this factored load okay should be less than the design strength of the member that means whatever member we are trying to take here correct and we just try to check its capacity that is the strength of that member in uh, tension okay that should be higher than 75 kn so this forms okay the basis of any design that we are trying to talk about that means the factored load should be less than okay the design strength of the structure correct so this is the basis of the designs that we are trying to talk about now one more important discussion that you need to understand here that is modes of failure correct now whenever we just try to uh, take a, a, a tension member correct and then try to understand how it's going to fail that means you are just trying to have some tension member arrangement you have a tensile member you have got some kind of connection correct and then you are just trying to load it till failure you're just trying to pull it till failure so we expect three possible types of failure three possible types of failures what are the three possible types of failures that we can have here the first one is yielding of gross section correct so please understand when we just talk about this gross section 
So whenever you just talk about come across this word gross section, okay, yielding, it would be between the joints, it would be between the joints or connections. Is it all right? So a tension member is, sub, is, is connected at the ends. So yielding means okay, somewhere between the two connections. Okay, you can expect this failure to take place. Okay, that is the first one. It may fail like that. That is yielding of gross section. The second one, rupture. Okay, of critical section. Okay, right? Rupture. So rupture means what? Okay, it has to tear off. It has to tear off. Now this rupture, net. Okay generally occurs okay at the connections especially in case of bolted joints because you have punched some holes or drilled some holes okay in the member to accommodate okay the bolts am i clear and hence you can expect that at those sections correct the net area would be less and hence the possibility of rupture okay would be definitely more Okay, at such sections and you just trying to talk about that this rupture or tearing away correct of the member occurs generally okay, uh, along the bolt line okay, holes, bolt hole lines okay, normally seen in case of end connections. Right? So this is the second possible failure that can happen which we call as rupture of critical sections and these critical sections are generally taken okay, I, I, I mean, uh, uh, in the region of connections. Correct? And the last one is block shear at the end connection. So that means okay, the connection itself can fail. Okay? Here we are trying to expect the member to fail. Right? So member fails by yielding correct? between the connection. So here okay, the member can rupture okay, along the bolt holes okay? whereas here the connection itself can fail. So we have basically three different types of possible failures okay, is what you need to understand. So whenever we are trying to do any numerical problem, yeah, we would be just trying to take all these things, okay, right? different types of failures okay, that we can just try to talk about. So now how do we calculate the design strength of the member? I did tell you okay, in the uh, uh, two slides back that when we are doing the uh, I mean, uh, uh, design, okay, the concept okay, that we are trying to talk about is okay, the factored load should be less than the design strength of the member okay, TD. So now how do we calculate this design strength TD? So this design strength TD okay, will be taken as will be taken as the least of the following three values. Correct? So we are going to say it is taken as a lesser of that means the least okay, lesser of the least of these three values. What are these three values? The first one, okay, yielding of gross section. I did tell you that okay, one type of failure could be yielding of gross section. Correct? So what is T suffix DG? This is a D stands for design strength and G stands for gross yielding. Correct? Right? So whatever uh, load that is required okay, to make the member fail by yielding of gross section is called as T suffix DG. Correct. The second one, okay, the rupture of critical section, okay, the load required or the force required to make this given member fail by rupture at the net critical section is denoted as T suffix DN. Again, D stands for design strength and N stands for the net rupture case. Correct. So T D N. Okay. So whatever load is required, force is required to make that member fail by this criteria is called as TDN. And the last one, block shear strength, that is T suffix DB, correct? So again, D stands for the design strength and B for block shear failure, that is end connection failure. So basically what we are trying to do is, okay, for any given problem, you will be just trying to calculate all the three separately. Assume that, we will assume that okay, if it fails by yielding of gross section, right? what is the value? Okay, that would be T suffix DG, you get some numerical value. Okay? So if you just try to assume that it may fail by rupture at critical section, okay, the value we are trying to take it as T suffix DN. Correct? And if it fails by block shear, we are assuming, we are assuming that it may fail by block shear. If it, that happens, then this is the force required. 
correct to do that. Now what we are trying to do is we just try to compare all the three and then we say the least of that will be the design strength of the tension member, correct. So I hope now you are understanding, okay, we are just trying to take you through logically, correct. Now my next task obviously would be to understand how to calculate each of them separately one by one, correct, is it alright. So how do we calculate T sub x, okay, dg, how do we calculate T sub x dn and how do we calculate T sub x b, uh, db, correct, one by one. Okay. Now, we are just trying to go through these calculations one by one, correct. The first one, now please note that this is very important, okay. So, whatever we are trying to discuss, okay, okay, is present in your IS code, correct, IS 800, okay. So, that is, uh, I mean, uh, uh, section 6, section 6, IS 4, four I mean, IS 7, I mean, IS 800, section 6, IS 800 deals with design of tension members. So, class 6.2, correct. So, we are just trying to talk about gross section yielding T suffix dg, okay. So, we are just trying to go through some important classes, okay, which will help you to calculate, okay, all these design strengths, okay. So, let us start, okay. Now, we just try to take a steel plate, okay, prismatic plate, okay, and subject it to an axial pull, subject it to an axial pull, correct right, what will happen, yeah, it will resist the load initially as you keep increasing P, yeah, right, so the stresses keep on increasing more and more, correct, and finally, right, this section will, the material will yield and then what will happen, large deformations take place and finally, okay, this particular plate will fail at the ultimate stress, am I clear, I hope trying to understand. So, you can just go on increasing P, okay, the stress, okay, at any section XX, right, initially it will be elastic, okay, and then you can expect the yield stress to take place, okay, and then it keeps on increasing, reaches the ultimate stress, and again, after some time it is going to break, correct, right. So, what you need to understand is, no doubt, the plate can take stresses up to the ultimate load or ultimate stress, it can resist ultimate stress without any problem, right, it, it can resist up to that point. But definitely you cannot take that load, okay, when you are doing the calculation, basically because, okay, this particular important, it will elongate considerably, am I clear, did you understand, okay, as we saw, okay, it is a very ductile material, the amount of elongation undergone, okay, would be quite considerable. Is it all right? So, if it is very con considerable before failure, so the structure becomes unserviceable, correct? You can expect the structure to undergo large deformations, right? So, you cannot expect that to happen in a structure, correct? So, hence what we are trying to do is, okay, so we are going to limit, okay, you are going to limit, okay, the load to yielding stress, to yielding stress, you are not trying to go beyond that, okay, though the stress can increase beyond yielding to ultimate stress, okay, we do not take that in the calculation, okay, and hence because of this particular factor, excess of deformation, okay, and then it becomes unserviceable, unserviceable, and hence you are trying to limit it to yielding of gross section, yielding of gross section. So, that is what you need to understand, though it can take higher load, we are not trying to go to that, okay, the code restricts us to, okay, uh, take the load as the yielding load not the ultimate load and look at this, this is a very simple formula, okay, given in class 6.2, okay, which will help you to calculate T suffix dg, correct. So, what is the numerator? Numerator is stress into area, correct. So, what is the stress? Yield stress and what is A suffix g? It is the gross area. Why are we taking the gross area? Please understand, we are assuming that the section is failing between the connection, correct, when you say between the connection, okay, it is a gross area. So, we just try to multiply the yield stress, not the ultimate stress, okay, yield stress multiplied by the gross area, that will give the what, okay, the yield, that is the, the yield load, yield load, okay, and then we are trying to, uh, 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 I mean reduce the load, we are trying to reduce the load by partial safety factor of the material, 
I make clear. So the partial set, this gamma m0, gamma m0 is nothing but the partial safety factor okay, of the material okay, that we are trying to have here. And please understand the partial set factor of the material right now is 1.10, correct. So it is a very simple task okay, to calculate the value of T sub x dg, right, given in clause 6.2. Is it all right? I hope it is a very simple expression. I, I think you will definitely, uh, 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 you cannot forget this, okay. Stress multiplied by area divided by the partial set factor, correct. So Fy into Ag yield stress not ultimate okay yield stress multiplied by gross area because it happens between the connection and you have to reduce that am i make clear you have to reduce okay from limit state method i hope you understand correct the loads are increased and the uh, the, the strength of the materials are reduced that's how we talk about the partial set vectors for loads we enhance the loads okay factored loads okay and we try to reduce the strength Okay, and this is the redu reduction of strength. You are dividing it by a, a number which is more than 1 okay, to reduce this value and this is 1.1. Please remember whenever using yield stress Fy, you will always be dividing by gamma m0 or m0, gamma m0 okay, which is 1.1 and this results in Tdg. It is a very simple calculation. right? So I will just try to close my presentation okay, right now. Okay, and uh, we will be back. We just try to recollect. So, in this particular presentation, we have just taken you through okay, some important uh, introductory uh, remarks with respect to tension members. Okay, and then we have just talked about some factors influencing ten tensile stre uh, tens tension strength in members. Then we have talked about different uh, shapes of cross sections okay, of sections that we are trying to use here. Okay, in this particular case, uh, important uh, uh, discussion on uh, the uh, stress strain diagram of uh, the mild steel, okay, uh, showing you a lot, I mean enormous uh, ductility. And then we are just trying to we introduce you to the types of failures, okay, three different types of failures. And again, we have just tried to stop at an important stage where we have found how to calculate the design strength, okay, from first failure or first criteria that is yielding of gross section. Okay. So, with this we close this particular presentation. I hope you enjoyed, okay, learned a uh, lot of things, uh, basic things with respect to this. So, we will again come back okay, uh, uh, shortly and then we will just try to take on with uh, the next kind of failures. Okay. Thank you all.